Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I made this chicken wire frame. Let's start with the materials that I used. The first thing I'm going to do is take my picture frame that I purchased. I actually found this open back frame in the clearance aisle at Michael's for about $8. So I brought it home and now I'm going to spray the primer all over it because we're going to paint it. And the primer is going to help the paint stick on very nicely. After about 10 to 15 minutes of letting the primer set and completely dry, I brought inside the frame and now I'm going to take some acrylic paint. As you can see here, I've got two shades. I've got like an aqua blue and a white. I'm adding in a little bit of the white just to kind of wash the color out because I want a lighter shade. I'm just going to mix the paint together and then I'm going to take a chip paintbrush and I'm going to use that to apply the paint all over the frame. Also, don't forget to paint the sides of the frame. Um, for this project, I only used one layer of paint and I felt like that was enough because I was going for that distressed, rustic look. So one layer was absolutely fine. Um, it's really your preference though. Go ahead and add as many layer of paint as you want. Once you're done painting, don't forget to let it dry for a few hours until it's completely dry. Then the next thing you're going to do is seal it. So here I've got my sealant and I've brought my frame outside because there's a little bit of odor. So I'm going to spray all over about one layer will do. And then you're just going to let it sit and dry. And then once it's done, we're going to bring it back inside. As you can see here, I've brought the frame inside and I have myself here a wire cutter because we are going to work with chicken wire. 
so you will need one of these that can cut I'd say heavy duty wire and then I also have a heavy duty staple gun and then of course we need our chicken wire this is called poultry netting and I purchased this at Menards for about around four to five dollars for this whole roll and make sure that you know the size of your frame when you go because I was kind of guessing and I was so glad that I actually picked the right size The next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to unroll my chicken wire and then I'm going to carefully lay it over the frame. As you can see, I flipped the frame over because we're going to be working with the back of the frame. So I'm going to take my chicken wire and I just want to make sure I get an, a good idea of how much of the chicken wire I will need. Once I have a good idea of how much I need, I'm going to take my wire cutter and I'm just going to cut away what I do not need. And I do suggest that you do this with caution because if this is the first time you're working with chicken wire or a wire cutter or even a heavy duty staple gun, it can be a little unsafe. So make sure if there are kids around to keep them away and if there are pets around to keep the pets away because you are working with metal. Now that I have a good piece that'll fit the whole entire frame, the next thing I'm going to do here is take my staple gun and I'm just going to staple it in place. Um, don't worry about tightening it yet because like I said, the chicken wire is a little harder to work with um, because it is metal. So I'm just going to staple the four corners just to keep it in place so that I have a good idea of what I need to pull and what I do not need to pull. As you can see here the chicken wire is popping forward towards me as I press down and I don't want that so I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to pull so this is where I was referring to pulling I'm going to pull as tight as possible and then lock it in place with the staple gun because I want the chicken wire to lay as flat and smooth as possible
So as you can see here, after I fixed it and pulled it tighter, um, as I'm pressing down, it's laying more flat. So I think it looks good to me. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to duct tape the back. Um, this is completely optional. I just decided to take my duct tape and um, put some of it on the back because there, where I cut the chicken wire was kind of poking out. And if I had to carry this or hang it, I didn't want um, those edges to be poking anyone or sticking out or you know what I mean. So I just took the duct tape to protect it. And here is the last step. I wanted to add a fabric backing. At first I wanted to use burlap but then I changed my mind. So I went to Joann's and picked out a fabric that had pattern. My daughter helped me so she did really well. I only paid a few dollars for this so that was really great. Um, and this is what I'll be adding to the back of the frame. If you're like me and you're a little unsure of how the fabric will look on the frame, um, just take your fabric that you've purchased and lay it on a flat surface and then take your frame and set it on top of the fabric. This will allow you to see how the fabric will look with the frame before you actually staple it. And not only that, it will help prevent you from ruining your fabric or damaging your frame. As you can see here, I'm just taking my scissors and cutting the fabric to fit the frame. Once I'm done cutting, I'm going to take my staple gun and I'm going to staple the fabric in place. I want to make sure that the fabric is nice and tight and laid out evenly. So I'm going to staple it in place and pull in certain places as needed and then staple that down. Finally, here is the finished product and it turned out really great. If you think about it, if you were to purchase a chicken wire frame like this at the store, it'd be about 40 to 50 bucks for especially this size frame. Well, I made this under $20, so I think I did really well. And I didn't have any room to hang it up in my tiny apartment, so I actually took the frame with me to work and I have plenty of space there and I could definitely use it to organize my notes. So I hung out at work. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and follow.